I'm Taylor Roncancio, Founder, CEO, Senior Portfolio Manager of Roncancio Wealth Management. I'm giving our monthly market update today. Um, what I really wanted to really focus on was the uh, tech side of our portfolio. And one of the ETFs that we use to track that is QQQ. Um, so I'm going to pull that up here. Um, QQQ, you can kind of see we've had a little bit of a pullback recently. I know a lot of people have been following the market recently. You know, we've had uh, two of the biggest pullback days um, since 2011. This is QQQ's uh, daily chart. Uh, really kind of gives us a closer view on the type of volatility that we're seeing. You know, what we see here is, like I said before, broke through its 10-day moving average, uh, broke through its 50-day moving average, and also came and broke through its 200-day moving average. We're starting to see some accumulation, uh, some accumulation again, and some buyers coming into the market, um, which gives me confidence. This is the S&P 500 um, on a pointed figure chart. Um, you can see this is February. You know, we reached the high, had a pullback. And we've been building up resistance all the way to where we are now. We broke through that high recently, um, but then we had a little bit of a pullback. Um, now we're starting to see uh, buyers come back into the market, and we're starting to see um, demand take control um, of the investment again. And slide above its bullish support line, which is a good sign. Now this is the S&P 500 again. You can see we had that recent pullback that I was talking about. Broke through its 10-day moving average, also 50-day, still well above its 200-day moving average. Um, you can see that we're starting to have some accumulation again after some distribution. Um, and we'll touch on its daily chart now. This is a closer view on the volatility that we're seeing in the S&P 500 index. Um, you can see the uh, pullback back in February here. Um, also right here recently, um, broke through its 10-day, 50-day, also 200-day, but again, came back above its 200-day moving average recently. We did see that above average distribution, but again, we're starting to see some accumulation again and some buyers starting to return to the market. Now this is a chart that I really like to touch on with a lot of my clients when they ask, you know, are we going to have another recession? You know, what's the market going to do? Are we going to have a big pullback? Um, now this is our main indicator. Essentially, it's the S&P 500 versus the Barclays Aggregate Bond Average or AGG. And the reason the reason why we why we want to look at this indicator is because it's predicted the, the previous two recessions. Um, you can see back in 08 how it pulled back and 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 basically went into the 2008 um, recession. But we really haven't seen any type of activity like that since February 2016. It gave a small little sell signal before it went on to a buy signal very quickly after that. Um, so it, 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 it leads me to believe you know, that we still have a ways to go before this bull market starts to break down, at least another two years. Um, but obviously, you know, we're, we're going to be watching the data very closely on a daily basis. So you know, obviously we don't have a crystal ball, we, we can't predict the future, but things still look good for the long term. Recently, you've seen us going almost to zero exposure to international equities. A lot of you say, hey, well, why are you doing that? Well, you know, we actually compare each one of our asset classes versus cash um, and against each other, obviously. The, the, the more number of wins that each asset class has against one another, the stronger the asset class is, and it illustrates the market strength or the asset class strength. You know, right here we can see that international equities failed its bogey check versus cash, which means that cash is actually a better investment right now than international equities. Okay, and that's kind of why you see us overweight domestic so uh, as much as we have, which I think is perfectly fine, is to take advantage of the strong relative strength that we're seeing there and avoiding the weak areas of the market like international equities. So you can see domestic equities is the number one asset class. Um, technology leading, and which is why you know we are overweight technology. It has been the number one a uh, sector within domestic equity asset class for quite some time now. Um, you can see healthcare has just taken up to second place. You're going to start seeing uh, some adding some positions to healthcare. Um, industrial is in third, financial is in fourth, and consumer cyclical coming in fifth. Um, international equities, you know, obviously, um, you know, something that we're not really comfortable entering just yet because it hasn't passed the bogey check for cash. But something that we're always going to be obviously monitoring and uh, watching very closely. I want to touch on some of our individual holdings. Um, first one being Microsoft. You know, I really like Microsoft a lot. I think they have great leadership under their CEO. Not only that, they're really doing well in, in the cloud space. Um, you can kind of see with the recent pullback, you know, yes, Microsoft has been on a very strong trend, uh, but we did it, it did also pull back with the market um, recently with, with that pullback that we saw um, last week. Now, you can see we broke through, uh, let me go back to this weekly really quick, we, we broke through our 10-day moving average, still above the 50 and 200-day moving average, which, you know, leads me to believe that, you know, we're still in very good shape. But with Microsoft, it's been holding very strong. We go to the, uh, the daily. Um, you can see, yes, it did break through its 10-day its, uh, uh, moving average. Also, it's 50-day, but it's still above its 200-day moving average. And it actually has almost come back to, you know, 
just above its 50-day moving average. So still very confident uh, about Microsoft. You can see the distribution here of the selling, but again, the uh, the buyers are coming back. The accumulation is starting to build. You know, so we're very positive on really what Microsoft is doing and really what they have coming down the pipeline. Um, this is also a, a pointy figure chart of, of, of Microsoft. You can see, you know, still very strong trend. Um, hasn't given a sell signal in quite some time. We have one, two, three, four consecutive buy signals from Microsoft. So this is an investment that I'm still very high on. Still looks very strong technically and is still in a positive trend. You can see it as a 5 out of 5 technical attribute rating, which is very strong. We rank our investments from 0 to 5, only recommending 3, 4, and 5s for our clients. Um, it's going to, it's, it's a buy signal versus the S&P 500, okay, which is a good sign. Before we invest our clients in anything, we want to ensure that the investment that we're going to be inserting them into is obviously going to outperform the S&P. If it's not going to outperform the S&P, then we're, we're taking excessive risk when I could just put a, a, the client into the S&P 500 and achieve a lot, a lot more return and, and a lot less risk, which is the name of the game. Um, from there, we're also going to examine it versus its peers, uh, the, the technology index. Um, it's a buy signal versus the, the, the technology index, which is a good sign. Obviously, if it's not going to outperform the technology index, you know, why would I invest you in that individual equity when I could put you into the index, an, an, an index ETF, for a lot less risk and more return? And like I said, that's the name of the game. Um, so that's a buy signal, also in a column of X's, so short term it is going to outperform. This is Boeing, this is one of our positions that we also hold. Um, very strong on Boeing, as you can see, it's had a very nice trend line moving upward here. Some volatility recently um, was part of the pullback, um, broke, uh, broke, broke below its 10 day moving average, but it has since then moved above it, um, so that's a good sign. So what we're looking at right here is Boeing's daily chart. So this gives us a closer look on the volatility that we've been seeing within the market and within the investment. Um, so we can see here that it's kind of been trading in a range, uh, breaking below its 10-day moving average and its 50-day moving average, but it's been staying above its 200-day moving average, which is a good sign for the long-term trend, um, still intact. Um, recently, it did drop below its 50-day moving average again, but it's since uh, emerged above it, which is a good sign. You can see the, um, the uh, distribution here that's been occurring recently with that pullback that we had. But, th but again, like I said before, the, uh, the buyers are coming back in and the accumulation is starting to build. Um, also, relative strength. It's above the market. It's, it's 1.31, so that's also a good sign. You know, anytime it's above the market, we want to be in it. So this is Boeing on a pointed figure chart. You can see the volatility that, we re that, we that recently has been uh, seen. Um, but what I think this is, is building up resistance for a move higher. You know, this is a good sign right here. Um, not only that, it hasn't given a sell signal in a while. Um, since uh, August, um, so you know things are looking good as for Boeing. Yes, we had a little, bit of, a little bit of a pullback, but with the uh, the fundamentals that I've been seeing and the technicals that we see, also still well above its bullish support line, we think it's going to continue to move higher. United Healthcare, we we like United Healthcare a lot. Um, you can see even with the recent pullback, didn't really do much to it on a weekly basis. Um, you can see it did break through its 10-day moving average, but still well above its 50 and 200 200-day moving average. The accumulation looks really strong. Um, relative strength looks good right there at the market. You look at its daily chart, you can see it did break through its, its 10 day, its 50 day, um, but it's still well above its 200 day moving average, meaning that its long term trend is still intact. So we still like this investment. Um, and we definitely think right now is, is a good opportunity if you don't have it, uh, if you don't own this, to you know, maybe um, uh, um, establish a position in it. Now this is point and figure chart, so you can see things look very good. We have one, two, three, four consecutive buy signals here, and if we get to 276 bucks, that'll be the uh, the fifth. Um, so as as long as uh, you know things keep going in the right direction, um, demand stays in control, which it looks like it is. Um, we like this investment. You know, currently it's a technical attribute rating of a five out of five. You know, very strong buy signal over the S&P, column of X is short term, which is good. Also, buy signal versus over its uh, over the healthcare index, which is good, and the column of X is for short term. So things look good for United Healthcare. This is Amazon. I'm sure we all use Amazon here, um, but you can see Amazon's trend very strong. You know, we've been in it for quite some time, and, and we are very big believers on Amazon. You can see that yes, it did break through its 10-day uh, moving average. It did touch its 50-day, which is great. It's still well above its 200-day, leading me to believe you know that its long-term trend is still intact. Recently, you can see above average um, distribution, but accumulation is starting to build again, and its relative strength is a monster above the S&P with a 6.47 uh, relative strength reading, which is very, very strong also. Well, this is Amazon's uh, daily chart. 
You can see that right here, uh, and, this is, and this is due to the recent pullback, it broke through its 10-day moving average and 50-day moving average. But it is still above its 200-day moving average, which leads me to believe that the long-term trend is still intact for this investment um, and demand is starting to take control. Um, you can see that recently we did have above average of distribution, um, but the buyers are starting to enter the market again for it and accumulation is starting to build, which is a good sign. So to touch on the uh, technical attribute uh, rating for Amazon, it's a 5 out of 5 rating, okay, which, which is our strongest rating. It's a buy signal over the S&P 500, which is you know, very good. Also, column of exits, so short term will outperform the S&P. Also, as a buy signal versus its peers, um, the consumer cyclical index. Um, and also, um, is on a column of X's versus it also, so that means short term is going to outperform. This is PayPal. You know, recently, um, PayPal did break uh, below its 10-day moving average on its weekly chart. Um, it also broke below its 50-day uh, moving average. Um, starting to regain some steam here with some accumulation, but we did see above average um, distribution here last week. But things are starting to look good again uh, for PayPal. So this is the daily chart for PayPal. This kind of gives us a closer look on the volatility that we're seeing within the market and this investment. Um, you can see that it's broke through its 10-day, 50-day, and 200-day moving average. Um, and this is a position that we're watching very closely. Um, obviously, we still believe the trend is intact. Um, however, we may consider trimming some of this position um, in the future. Um, this is its pointing figure chart. So yeah, as you can see here, you know, really what I'm looking at here is really for it to, I don't want it to go be, be below $71 or $69. You know, it, th those are its next two lines of defense, okay, and, and, and next two levels of resistance. If we're able to stay above those two areas, you know, I'm still very positive on really what uh, PayPal is doing, and I'm still bullish on it. Um, but if we are to break below those two areas, then that's cause for concern and may cause us to exit the position. But right now, you know, not, not really that concerned with it. We're starting to creep back up. Demand's starting to get back in control. We just climbed above its full support line, and that's a good sign.